to the rules of change. Yes? If I want to create new law, I have to follow rules that are legal as well. Yes? And finally, the rule of recognition. I'm not going to, this one is the hardest. The rule of recognition, very briefly, is the constitution. The most important rule in any country. Why? Because this rule of recognition will let me know what's underneath. Yes? Uh, the only thing I want you to remember from here, for Austin, for Austin we have law as a set of rules created by the sovereign in a certain territory for certain people with sanction. With sanction. Yes. For Hart, for Hart no. For Hart no. He may agree with some points. But for Hart, law is not more than only sanctions, only punishment. For Hart, law is a set of rules. What kind of rules? Primary rules and secondary rules. Am I clear? Then try to see, if you want to remember only one sentence, uh, primary rules refer to people. Yes? You have to do this. You may do this. You do not have to do this. Yes? So I let you. Yeah. I'm forcing you to do it, or you have the ability or permission to do it or not to do it. Yes? So they refer to us. And all these rules that for Austin, they didn't exist, because they don't have any sanction. Yeah. So if we follow Austin, we would be missing all this in law. This wouldn't be law. And how to appoint in peace, that's not law for Austin. Why? Because we don't have a punishment. Do you see? Yeah. For our understanding, of course they are law. We get married. That's law as well. We follow procedure. If we don't follow procedure, we are not married. Yes? My will is not valid. Am I clear? Yes? So we, here we see two different texts on what is law. One from Austin, one from Hart. I'd like you today as well to argue against these definitions. So that's why I've been asking in all my workshops, you come up with your own definition. You have to do your research. But that's why it's empowering you as well. You have to come up. You may not even, I don't agree with this. <coughs> I have papers that go against this kind of uh, way of thinking. Yes? You have to come up with your own understanding. You may agree with Austin, all law should have a punishment. You may agree with someone else, all law should have moral values. Yeah, I'm more concerned there. I'm positive law, what we call hard positivism. I think there are two different issues. And for me, law is like mathematics. You commit a crime, there is a rule, I apply the rule. Very simple, regardless of my morals. Yeah. But it's not that easy. It's not that easy for some. For me, it's very easy, like doing mathematics. Yeah. Because I have a Kelsenian form. I'm not going to go into Kelsen, but I have that formation. Yes. For me, it's like doing logic, yeah. applying law. <coughs> Even in criminal law. <coughs> Let me know, go now very briefly. The, the rest, I'm not going to go into detail, because I'm not going, this is interpretation. Uh, so keep it for your information. And for the ones, I'm not going to go here either, for the ones that um, I want to answer question one, legal theory, um, <coughs> in the actual essay, in the actual essay, uh, you may want to visit chapter nine. I'm not going to go into detail here, whether we need morals. And for, for how we need morals when we apply the law. For how we need morals. Uh, remember I referred to natural law and positive law. In positive law, we have a subdivision. The one that may include morals and the one that may not. The one that do not include morals, so law created by men, for men, in positive law. Law created by men, for men. If I'm a hard positivist, Kelsen, Kelsen is a hard positivist, I don't take into account morals. I don't take, that's hard positive. It's only the law, yes? Hard is a soft positivist. So law is created by men for men. However, hard will include moral values when making a decision, when creating the law. Yes? <clears throat> and I'll show you how. Uh, Hart versus Devlin. <coughs> uh, it's funny because you were talking about Thomas uh, earlier. Uh, we had a, a what is law and the second exercise in workshop two you were supposed to or you are supposed for the one that are still 
to do it, you are supposed to put examples uh, about religion, morality, and uh, law, and compare three different normative systems. Uh, some of the groups talk about civil union or gay marriage, some people talk, and some of them brought uh, homosexuality as a whole. Uh, in this country, certain behavior, certain homosexual behavior were criminalized up to the 60s, so it's not that long ago. I'm not talking about civil union, I'm talking about the public display of homosexual behavior. At that point, we have Hart, Hart from Oxford, involved in that dispute, in that theoretical dispute, because these people, that, that's why I'm, I'm going to bring someone next class, I mean, his papers, uh, because these people influence our parliament. And they are teaching in Cambridge and Oxford, and they have strong influence in making and changing the law in this country. Uh, between the 50s and the 60s, we had a dispute between Devlin and Hart. Hart, the same guy that wrote the concept of law. The same guy that wrote the concept of law. Up to that point, Devlin was a judge. Was a judge. Hart was teaching law in Oxford. He was a philosopher. He was not a lawyer. He was a philosopher teaching law. We have here uh, the, the parliament appointed when we need to make new law or we need to amend a uh, law in these countries and many countries. Parliament appoints specialists or people that work on that project. Yes. This group of people, MPs, are called a committee, a commission, a committee, yes? And after they do their work, they should come up with a report. Yes. Usually, more often than it's, it's the same of the main person in that panel or in that commission, yes? the president of that committee, yes? This is simply a survey. Yes. Th that's not important. What is relevant here, parliament asks these MPs to decide whether we can equate a sin, so being homosexual, yes, to a crime. Because up to that point they were the same. That's why I explained religion more than time. To that point we were, in this country, we had intertwined religion, morals, and law. Yes. So whatever society at that point, back in the 50s and 60s, used to see as a sin, I'm talking here about religion, I'm talking here about morality, used to be classed as a crime, a criminal offense. It was a criminal offense. Why? Because according to them, the main function of this law is to protect public order, to protect us. Translated, if there is wrong behavior, moral religion, if there is wrong behavior, yes, what is the function of law? Too many, even now, too many. Protect. Protect what is right, what is wrong. That is called enforcement of morality. For many, even now, even judges, for many, what do we do when we do law? We simply support morality. Yes, we simply support morality. So let me go to, <coughs> I, I'll, I'll try to make it, what kind of moral? So what is right or wrong? What is right or wrong, you may ask. And that's a, uh, this is not a class about justice. I have another class about justice, I'm not going to. Read. But um, very briefly, Devlin. So you are telling me, Devlin, the judge, you know, his point of view was, law is here to protect British morals, yes? British morals. That's the function, the enforcement of morals. Yes? Now we can ask Devlin, so what is right for British morality and what is wrong? His answer, and we have several answers actually. How do you, we get British sense of morality? First of all, a guy on a bus. Yes? That would be an average person at random in London and thinking what is right or wrong for him or for her. Yes? This is his response as a judge. This is his response as a judge. And you think. Uh, my question, I was thinking even about Brexit. Can London represent, even if we accept it, that London has a unique, a unique moral standard? Can we even claim that London is representative of the UK? I think Brexit is the best example. Yes? Do you agree with this? Do you see? So there are already things that you may argue against. Okay, this one may not be. What about someone part of the jury? 
Yes, we have 12 people there. We have 12 individuals. It may be less subjective, but there are still people. Yes, how are you going to put together 12 different criteria for moral standards? How do you get an average? This is not doing mathematics. Yes, <coughs> and many other, a reasonable. You are going to see this all your life now. You are going to become lawyer soon. All your life, reasonable, reasonable. What is to be reasonable? For some people, to be reasonable is to shoot someone else. And for some people, or for most people, that's unreasonable, regardless of their reasoning behind. Do we see? So, daily, day, I'm, I'm not going against, I'm just showing you how easy it is to spot things you may argue for or against. Because his way of thinking was, law is protecting moral standards in British society. As defined as whom? As the guy that is taking the bus. Or as the guy in the, in the jury. Yes? Think if you, you argue with that. To what point or to what extent? Tolerance. Yes, up to the point I tolerate. My question is for you. What I may tolerate, you may not be able to tolerate. What I may like, you may dislike. Yes? So how can we claim tolerance? Or to what level? of tolerance. Devlin's argument. Law. Yes. Law, a third definition today. Law is a set of rules in any territory for a group of people that secures, supports moral standards. That is law for Devlin. Yes. So we have Austin. We have Hard, and now we have Devlin, yeah? So for him, is for, for, for any society, let's say the British one, any behavior, in this case, to be homosexual at that point, 50s and 60s, any behavior is immoral, yes? And immoral goes against society, what do we do with law? <coughs> we punish, yes? So law will always, by default, include moral reasoning. Why? Because the main function for law, for people like Devlin, which is fine because you may have a, a positive side to this, but this may be the extreme. We were talking about fundamentalism in my workshop, we were talking about terrorism. You're always going to have extremes in everything, in everything. You tell me your take. I'm offering you three so far. I'm going to talk about something else next week. But so far we have someone defining the law through punishment. Someone defining the law, we may, may not include moral values. I'm not going to include punishment to define the law. Yes? And someone else defining the law only, purely, as a means to an end. I have law here to protect moral. <coughs> yes? Which one are you going to vote for? You have many more. You have many more. I'm going to, um, before we finish, Hart is going to come up, so then we have someone again, Hart, the same guy that uh, wrote the concept of law. Oxford professor, he's going to, uh, it was a speech then printed as a book. It's a very, very slim book, if you ever want to research this, I can't remember how many pages, but it's very slim. Law, Liberty, and Morality. I'm not going to go into detail because I'm going to ask you something before you go, uh, and we're running out of time. With this book, was he's showing us that the way of thinking Devlin has has several problems. Yes, has several problems. Uh, I'm not going to give you the answer here because I, I, I'd like you to leave you with three different uh, notions or definitions of law. Yes, and I'd like you to make the decision which one you feel and you think is better suited for you and your understanding of law. The only thing I'm going to ask always is to tell me why you are going to go with moral justification with punishment or without punishment.